I found the exhibit by Sunrise Power the most interesting on the exhibit floor because um, they had this really neat way of deploying solar panels on top of roofs. So it was a, a modular way of actually deploying them. So they would actually um, put up these modules in large segments to actually save time on actually installing the solar panels, which I thought would really reduce the cost of uh, the installation as opposed to the traditional way of installing uh, these panels. Um, so the most interesting thing I found uh, on the conference floor, uh, or then the expo floor I should say, is um, the booth by uh, Canada Solar, or Canadian Solar. They had uh, uh, this whole video of how their manufacturing process works and uh, how the cells are put together and how the whole panel comes together. And I found that actually really interesting uh, to see. So the most interesting thing I think I've seen uh, on the, the, floor today, uh, the floor this weekend or um, the last few days have been, has been uh, Morgan Solar. Uh, they, uh, they manufacture in Canada and uh, it's a very automated system which uh, really seems to be the, the future of, uh, of manufacturing for, um, for the solar industry in Canada. Uh, probably the most interesting uh, aspect of, of the exhibit uh, for me was uh, seeing a lot of companies that I didn't realize were involved in the solar energy industry in Ontario. Um, uh, such as Advanced Energy. I was familiar with the company because they sell RF power supplies uh, and we actually use some of them in our laboratory, uh, but I didn't realize they actually were also uh, supplying inverters, so I spoke with them and, uh, and told them my experience that they were interested in that as well. Um, and also uh, there was a Swiss company, ABB, it's a very large company, but I didn't realize that they uh, were involved in this area as well, so that was probably the most interesting aspect of the exhibit for me. Well, the most interesting thing I learned about uh, some of the talks is actually the scale of the um, solar uh, installations and deployments that I've seen uh, some companies do and the financing behind them. So there's um, a lot of uh, cooperation between financing and large companies that do the deployments of um, really, really large solar uh, um, fields and power plants. So I found that really enlightening to see sort of the financial and um, the deployment and construction side of this and how it all works together. So the most interesting I learned, uh, thing I learned at the talks I attended would have to be that uh, the industry is still really trying to push towards uh, getting solar in Alberta. Uh, and as a, an Alberta resident myself, I actually didn't know that. And so learning about that, that there was this big push in the industry to uh, try to get installations in Alberta done was um, really fascinating to me. So I've uh, attended a lot of talks uh, about uh, uh, firms going global, which is uh, part of what my uh, my group looks at. And uh, so I think the the key thing um, that uh, that Canadian solar firms have to remember is that it, it's important to, to go global. It's important to look for uh, expansion opportunities abroad, and that's really been driven home by uh, by a lot of the talks that I've been going to here. Uh, probably the the most interesting thing I learned at the talks um, I attended a talk on uh, uh, the future of the feed-in tariff program. Uh, I found that really fascinating. Uh, also, just the, the debate uh, amongst uh, uh, policymakers and uh, various people in uh, the industry in terms of uh, what they foresee the direction of the, of the feed-in tariff and what uh, uh, sort of policy programs would uh, um, incentiv incentivize uh, the, the greatest growth um, in the industry. And so I, I found that really interesting, just uh, hearing the different opinions. I was most excited to meet and network with the people at Sharp uh, here at uh, this conference uh, because uh, so we have at the University of Ottawa we have the characterization capabilities for these cells and at Sharp they have the production and um, the ability to s supply us with all sorts of cells for a further study. So it seemed like a great relationship where I can talk to them and say hey look we'd like to look at some of these cells and examine them and they would have be able to uh, provide um, this educational support uh, for us in the terms of supplying uh, different types of solar cells for us to study. So the most, uh, uh, the person I was most excited to network with was uh, uh, the gentleman at uh, Morgan Solar. Uh, they're developing this really interesting new technology and they had this um, lens-like optic that is entirely new. It uses these waveguiding principles and getting to talk to him about that was really, really interesting. And there's actually some uh, possible applications that our lab could use that kind of an optic for. So that was really exciting to me networking with him.
In terms of who it's uh, most interesting to talk to, um, just uh, getting a really uh, broad, talking to a broad range of manufacturers, trying to uh, trying to get a sense of what the industry looks like in Canada and where it's going. Um, in particular, I would go back to, to um, uh, Nick Morgan, who is uh, the the CEO of, uh, of Morgan Solar, and he has a lot of really interesting ideas on the future of the Canadian uh, industry, as I mentioned before. Uh, probably the, the most exciting people to network with for me, uh, where there's actually a lot of people that I had known um, several several years ago as part of a, another research network, uh, the Solar Buildings Research Network, and I, I had run into them, I hadn't seen them for uh, many years, and I had run into them um, at this conference and uh, just catching up with them and getting uh, their experience working in industry um, and also their perspective on, on the future of, of this industry in Canada and globally, uh, that, that was probably the most uh, interesting uh, network experience, networking experience for me. Well, the most surprising thing I learned at the conference was the fact that you can use solar panels and integrate them with an actual pool pump to save quite a bit of energy. So naturally, the electricity coming from a solar panel is DC, and the, you don't have to go through that AC to DC conversion um, from uh, through normal solar panel use. You can just go directly to a DC motor and save quite a bit of energy since the conversion efficiency is so good uh, for uh, pool fuel pumps. And I thought that was very neat and very simple way to actually save quite a bit of money and do it using solar energy. So the most surprising thing I learned at the conference uh, is this is my first time here and just learning about how many different companies there are in Canada and uh, the breadth of the industry was actually quite surprising to me. I didn't know it was this large or this big uh, and the companies had that much like uh, global outreach. Um, yeah, re really interesting. Didn't know it was this big. So the most uh, surprising thing I've uh, I learned at the the conference has been uh, the potential of uh, solar hot wa uh, solar uh, pool pumps. Uh, the pool pumps can be a really big uh, big pig for the electricity system, uh, particularly at peak times. And uh, and it actually turns out that a, that a solar powered one is much more efficient and uh, can actually be a, a can pay back in, uh, in just a few years. So I'll definitely be uh, investigating um, that a little bit more uh, with the, with the company uh, person I spoke with about about uh, how this ties into my work with uh, financing. Uh, probably the. The most surprising thing for me was, uh, again, the, the number of companies, um, the especially big international companies that are, are eager and uh, interested in getting into the solar space in Ontario and also um, looking at Alberta is also a very promising option. That was probably the most interesting and surprising aspect uh, for me at the conference. If I were to see myself in the solar industry in the future, I would uh, definitely want to be part of the academic research uh, side of things. So trying to optimize materials to ma make more efficient solar panels or uh, make the cost um, v much lower while still uh, keeping the efficiency that we uh, see with mo most solar panels these days. So really just trying to uh, see improvements uh, using material science and um, des proper design of solar cells to uh, make solar energy a much more viable source of energy. So where I see myself in the solar industry in the future is possibly continuing on in a research sort of way in developing new cells. Uh, another way that I think I might be um, uh, see myself in the future is uh, possibly designing uh, solar installations themselves, how to get them in the proper orientation, how to maximize uh, the uh, uh, sort of the installation's output uh, and things along that nature. So in terms of the solar industry, uh, I, I, I don't necessarily see myself uh, really getting into it specifically, but I, I will be definitely involved in sustainable development in general, and I definitely see uh, the role for solar in the Canadian energy system, uh, maybe not taking, taking it over, but certainly, uh, certainly as a peak shaving technology, and I, and I definitely will be engaging with solar throughout my career. Uh, well, I, I, have a, I have a passion for renewable energy and, and specifically uh, solar, and, and that's, that is why I ended up pursuing um, the research that I did uh, in solar cell research. Um, it, for me, it's, it's difficult to predict uh, because uh, there isn't much R&D uh, as of yet in Ontario or in Canada. Um, but I, I, I'm definitely focused on staying in the industry in some capacity. So perhaps uh, more in terms of uh, managerial or uh, policy um, point of view, maybe I'll see myself involved in the industry in that way.